In this video, I would like to show you how you can easily shuck a WD MyBook, WD Elements, or Easy Store Drive. Now, shucking is uh, it's when you can uh, crack open these enclosures to get the desktop drive out inside. So if you take a look down here, you can see that there's actually just a standard uh, desktop hard drive. Now, this is useful for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, external drives are usually a lot cheaper than internal hard drives. So what a lot of common folks, uh, enthusiasts like to do is buy external drives and then you rip them open to get the drive out inside and you can plug it in your desktop because they just use a regular SATA interface. Now with WD, you also have to be careful because on some drives, they use the 3.3-volt uh, pin as like the sleep indicator. There's lots you can read about it online. But uh, essentially, uh, the process is pretty simple. Uh, this is oh this is also very useful if the drive inside has uh, um, it still works but the USB to SATA uh, adapters have died as they tend to um, and so this way you can actually recover your data off of it and these are actually pretty easy to get at so all you kind of need to do is um, it's actually um, this whole site thing as you can already see kind of just comes apart so the best tool for this is literally something to pry it for which I'm just using a flathead but you might find better luck with whatever other tools. And so you kind of just twist this open. Uh, I mean, what I can say is try not to um, like drop it because the uh, drive inside probably won't like that. So now at the top, we can just uh, insert this here. And just, there you go, get it. It's on these little clips. So you just have to pop it off the clips, just like that. Uh, same for down here. This will be harder. I've already opened this and closed it a few times, so it's a lot easier for me to get at the clips now. But there's one right around here. It's two clips per side on the top and bottom, so the second one's here. There you go. Boom. And then you can kind of just, you can already see, drive inside. Um, you'll need to get both sides off usually. Um, I have uh, simplified the work a bit. Just the one clip here. There we go, and now you can kind of just uh, see that it kind of just uh, slides off just like this. Now, ideally, you want to not break apart a piece of plastic like this if you ever need to RMA this, and you will see that I have already, you'll see that I have already uh, done this to get the uh, get a drive. So this is a um, not the drive that this normally ships with. So then, what you can do is the drive is um, switched to a Phillips spit. You just unscrew this, which holds it down to the PCB. I apologize for the focus on this video. I only just noticed that. All right, and now you can kind of, there's two ways. You can either twist it this way. Um, well, you kind of have to do that. It's not really screwed into anything, so what holds it is there's this little uh, plastic piece here that kind of just goes into like the screw hole of the drive. And that kind of just keeps the sport in place. And then you can kind of slide the drive just like this once you've popped this piece out. So the easiest way to do this is, uh, let me show that again. If your drive is in here, um, you'll notice that uh, here you have these little um, things that, it, that can slide through just like this. So the best way is just push the drive up from the underside and you'll notice that it kind of just pops up and like that. And then the board's not really screwed into anything. So you can just do this. Now you can't take the board out because the board is plugged into the SATA port on the drive. Um, so you kind of just do this lifting maneuver uh, and that gets you the drive. Um, and then you can just you know, unplug the, uh, the USB to SATA bit. Um, you might be able to reuse this for other drives, but WD seems to be uh, doing a thing where they uh, lock the uh, firmware on this to make sure that you cannot reuse. Uh, for example, this, if I put this Toshiba drive in this enclosure, it won't recognize it. It has to be a WD drive. Unlike the Seagate enclosures where I have been able to, but uh, anyway, you can just put this back. I mean, there's nothing to keep it in there, but you can just uh, then, you know, close up your drive. It's pretty simple. Just slide it back on, and then you can just see how it just, uh, and then you can just snap it on. And that is the essential. Now, um, Next bit is this D drive comes with these uh, actually pretty nifty um, like vibration resistant uh, rubber bits. Uh, pretty cool because normally uh, yeah, I can just uh, get rid of these. 
and then unscrew the bits. Normally the bits are a lot uh, more screwed in, obviously, but this is just a... I mean, I have done some back prep for this video. Um, and then you can just slide these all off. And there you go. There is a desktop drive for you that you can then use uh, in your computer or uh, for your NAS uh, or wherever it may be that you need a desktop drive. Now, um, I mentioned that this is a pretty useful tip for uh, like stuff like data recovery as well. So um, the easiest way to actually, so if you have a, if you're using some of the desktop, you can obviously just plug these in. But if you're working with a laptop, uh, let me show you this. Uh, they make these uh, convenient SATA um, drive mounts. So this is, uh, for example, this particular one happens to have a USB as well as eSATA, or eSATA, depends how you want to pronounce it, provided your computer sports uh, SATA hot swap. Um, so if you have one of these, it's really simple. All you can do is you can just take the drive and just plug it in. Um, and then this way you can copy the files off of it easily, even if that USB to SATA module has already died. Um, and there you go. That's how you can easily uh, shuck a drive out of a WD MyBook. And this exact same enclosure design is also used on WD Elements, WD Easy Stores, and a couple of their other product lines. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped. Bye.